pre-K friends. I have a really fun experiment for you today. This week we've been talking all about ocean habitats or where animals and plants live in the ocean. So we've been talking about very specific habitats like hydrothermal vents and coral reefs and things like that. But oftentimes in the ocean, we, it's really important to understand how deep the water is and how that affects different habitats, okay? So I have a really cool experiment to do with you that has to do with ocean layers. But first, let's learn about some ocean layers. I have this picture to share with you guys so that we can learn together. Awesome, so as you can see in this picture, we have three different colors of water. And there's also different animals that live in these different colors, okay? So we're gonna start from the top and then we're gonna go down, okay? The top layer of water in the ocean is called the sunlight zone. You can also call it the photic zone. So can you say photic zone? Now say sunlight zone. The sunlight zone is named, as you might imagine, because lots and lots of sunlight can travel through the water. It's super sunny there. That's where all of our seaweeds grow. That's where all of the teeny, teeny, tiny little plants called phytoplankton live because they all need sunlight to live. There's lots of animals that live in this zone because animals depend on plants for food. Now, the next zone still has sunlight. The sunlight can still reach it, but it's not quite as sunny. It's not quite as bright. This is called the twilight zone. And it says here that the twilight zone usually starts around 200 meters, okay? So the sun travels pretty far in the ocean. So it says that photosynthesis or plants growing, making their own food, it's not possible in the twilight zone because there's not quite enough sunlight, okay? So some examples of animals that might live here are the swordfish, the hatchetfish, and it says over here, shrimp. There's lots of other animals that live in the twilight zone too. And we know that lots of animals go between the zones, right? Like our diving marine mammals. Some of them dive really, really deep to get their food before they go back up to the surface to get air. Okay, our last zone is called the Midnight zone. Do you have any guesses why it's called that? It's called the midnight zone because it's so deep that there's no sunlight there at all. So do you think there are any plants living in the midnight zone? Probably not. Now in the midnight zone, some animals that live here are the anglerfish. I know that's a favorite for some of you. The giant squid, another favorite. And right here it says the tripod fish, which I'm not really familiar with, but there's all kinds of crazy animals that live down there. Now we've talked about the deep sea a little bit and we know that there's a lot less animals that live in the deep sea than in other parts of the ocean because it's kind of hard to live down there. And there's also a lot less food to eat. Okay, so now that we know the ocean zones, I think it's time to get started on our science experiment. This science experiment has to do with density or how heavy something is and also how much space it takes up, okay? So if something is not very dense at all, that means it takes up a lot of space, but it's really, really light. Like if you think of like a big stick of cotton candy, is that heavy to carry around? Not really but it's really big. So that's something that's not very dense at all. Something dense could be maybe like a rock that you hold in your hand and you can feel how heavy it is. Even though it's not very big, it's still pretty heavy. That would be something that's dense, okay? Now in the ocean, water that is denser sinks to the bottom into the midnight zone, okay? Because it's heavier than all of the water above it, it sinks down low. And then there's water that stays in the middle. It's not the heaviest and it's not the lightest. And then there's the, le the least dense water that stays on the top. Usually in the ocean, 
The densest water is also the saltiest water and also usually the coldest water. Just a fun fact. Okay, to make our ocean layers, I have chosen three liquids from my home. Now, if you try this experiment, you might find different liquids that work. There's all kinds of different liquids you can find in your home. These are three that I found in my home that will work for me. So, the midnight layer is going to be made of this. <laughs> this is called molasses. You use it in baking sometimes. It's a little bit sweet and kind of sticky and really thick. Okay, so that's why it's going on the bottom. I also chose molasses for my midnight layer because it's a really dark color. And we know that in the midnight layer of the ocean, it's super dark. So I'm gonna add some molasses just so we can see. In my little jar, I used a little jar because it's a little bit easier to see using less liquid. Okay, that's our midnight zone. It looks like this. Oh, it's super dark, just like the midnight zone. Only I have a little angler fish to put in there. Okay, our next layer is going to be a blue layer, and this is going to represent our twilight zone, okay? So remember, the twilight zone, we don't have plants there, but the, the sun sunlight still gets through, so you can still see the water. I'm gonna add my twilight zone kind of on the side and kind of slowly because I don't want it to mix too much with my midnight zone, okay? I'm gonna add, again, just enough for you guys to see. Ooh, that looks really nice. Okay, we've got our midnight zone and now we have our twilight zone. And if you look really hard, I'll try to show you, you can see those layers mixing just a tiny bit. Oh, you can see my face, that's kind of funny. <laughs> just a tiny bit of mixing, which happens of course in the ocean too, right? It's not just these layers, that there's clear sections in between. All this water is mixing around. Okay, next we have this liquid. Any guesses what liquid is in my jar? If you guessed water, you are correct. This is water. I'm gonna add some color to my water to make it more fun. Now we have our middle layer as blue, and this top layer, remember it's where the, all the plants are. And when plants are teeny, teeny, tiny in the water, like phytoplankton, do you know what color they turn the water? They turn the water just a little bit green. So I'm gonna add some green too. Now this layer is supposed to be a little bit lighter than our middle layer, but it could be that I've added too much food coloring and that's okay, we're gonna see how it turns out. Okay, so I have this greenish blue layer for my sunlight zone or my photic zone. And I'm gonna add again, kind of slowly. I'm gonna see if I can try to drip it on the side while I pour it in. I'm just gonna do my best. All right, that's kind of a thin layer, but I think you can see it. All right, you guys, this is really cool, look at that. So we have the top layer of water, that is our photic zone. We have the middle layer, which is our twilight zone, and that's made of dish soap. And then we have that bottom molasses layer, that's our midnight zone. How cool is that? It looks really, really neat. Awesome, okay, so question. Now we learned a little bit about density today. Can you point to the liquid in my jar that is the densest? Point to which one is densest. The densest liquid is at the bottom. It's our molasses. So if you are pointing to the molasses, you're correct. All right, now point to the least dense liquid. Which is the least dense of these three liquids? Ooh, if you were pointing at the topmost layer, you are correct. Water is least dense out of these three liquids. And we know that soap is in the middle. <laughs> I hope you have so much fun with this experiment. And remember, you can try out different liquids. And remember in science, it's good to experiment. So if you're not sure which liquid is densest, maybe try it out and see what happens. Um, I hope you have so much fun and let me know how it goes. Bye.